Welcome to this video on user input and specifically looking at string text input in Python. So we've been looking at this concept of what goes in, that is your input, is extremely important. And the fact that we provide input all the time. Now so far we've been actually hard coding into the program our variables such as giving x the value of 3. But what if we wanted to dynamically provide input? in the same way that you provide input when you log into Facebook, you provide your username, your password, or when you play a game. In this series we're going to be looking at user input and specifically string input. String is the word that Python would use for text input, differentiating it from integer input. So if we look at the example of entering a password, suppose you wanted to actually ask the user for a password and store this password somewhere. This is the statement, or this is the command that you would use, and you need to note that there are three different parts. Suppose you wanted to get a password from the user. The first thing you would do is you would declare a variable called password. The second thing you do is use the input com command here. So you'd say password is equal to input. And finally, you would actually write what you want them to see. So that is your command to them, which you're going to print to the screen in your speech marks. So password input, enter your password. As you can see over here, you first declare the variable that is going to store the input. So when they enter a password, it gets stored in the variable password. Secondly, you use the input command. Lastly, you enter your command or question to the user in speech marks, and we'll see how that looks. Does it actually store the user input? As you'll see in a minute, it does. So if we write a command like this and write print password, it actually prints the password that the user has put in. So let's actually have a look at what that looks like with a specific example. So I'm going to code a chatbot and call, create a function called chatbot. Right down here, on the first level, the top level, I'm going to call the function. So let's say, welcome to chatbot. Now the first thing I'm going to do is going to ask the user for some text input. And I'm going to ask them for their name. So I write down the variable that is going to store the name equals input open brackets and in between the speech marks I write the command enter your name so if I play this you can see it's enter your name if I put in my name whatever it was it doesn't do anything yet but it has actually stored my name in this variable called name and we can see that by doing this can write some text, nice to meet you. Use the plus operator, which is also used to add strings together, as we saw in the printing series, and name. And whatever name I put in here, so if I put in Joe, it'll say nice to meet you, Joe. Now you notice over here, it's not quite printing it properly, there should be a space. And you can do that by simply, you can do it in one of two ways. You can either add a space there, you can see that that works. Or you can simply add a space in the same way that you would do text. So I've just added between nice to meet you and name some space. And it, that works in exactly the same way. Let's look at taking in another variable, such as hobby. You put down the variable that you want to store information into. We can then print that hobby. Using the plus, typing in the variable. Let's test that. Spelt chess wrong. That's a nice hobby. Chess. Now, another interesting thing you can do with string input is 
something like this. You could say, give me a word. So whatever word they give you, you would like to print it twice. So let's see if it works. Put in someone's name. So if I put in a word, joy, it prints the word joy twice. And you can obviously do that for as many times as you like. Notice that the plus operator is not acting to add in the conventional sense of the word, but it's actually putting these words together, putting these strings together. It's a big word called concatenation. Now we haven't learned about if statements yet, and that's where we're coming to that in a later series. But one of the simplest things you could do is create what's called a login screen. So let's have a look at how that would look, just to give you an idea. And of course it does require input to the username. Input of a password. So you can define the username, so you could say if the username is equal to such and such, such as admin, and the password is equal to, note the double equals, but we'll come back to that later, say open123, print access granted, else this is taking a string input. So I could put in the correct username and password and it give me access granted. And if not, it would say access denied. 